Hello everyone, it's Trina here from there's a card for that .ca, and today I'm going to be making a more of a masculine card, although it could go for anybody, a birthday card for my grandfather's 86th birthday this year um, using Lawn Fawn's Dad and Me stamp set, the Reveal Wheel Sentiment stamp set, the Reveal Wheel die, and the Reveal Wheel speech bubble add-on die. Um, so you're going to kind of see me go back and forth. It's not going to be really as smooth as I normally do. Um, I go back and forth between the pieces because I had a little person in my art room with me and I just kept getting lost in my process while I was filming and it really took all of my efforts to keep her little hands out of the camera because <laughs> she was like, talk about me, talk about me because she's six and apparently doing YouTube videos makes just the most wonderful thing in the world for her. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to start with stamping out the water from the Dad and Me set. And I used Lawn Fawn's Fish Tank ink and Moonstone ink. Um, and I, because it's a dye ink, it's a little bit splotchy on solid dyes. Um, so I wanted to use that to my advantage. So I started with the Fish Tank ink, which is the darker blue. And I stamped that once. And of course, it's going to look splotchy, which is totally fine because I have the Misty and you can stamp it again. So then I used the Moonstone ink to kind of get like a gradient in the water because I mean, water is never going to be completely smooth. Then I stamped the hat and masked that off with just some post-it note paper. And then I stamped the bear and the little moose from the Dad and Me set with Memento Tuxedo Black ink on 110-pound Copic Friendly cardstock. And I know I've mentioned it before, but it's worth mentioning again if this is the first time you're watching. Thanks for stopping by. Um, my Copic paper is just the 110-pound stuff I get at my local stationery store. Here in Canada, it's Staples. It's like 19 bucks for 250 sheets, and it is fantastic. It's what I use for stamping. It's what I use for Copic coloring. It's what I use for um, making my card bases, everything. It's pretty great. So I had done all of my die cutting prior to this because there's there's a bit of die cutting when it comes to making interactive cards and my die cutting is off screen anyway so you didn't need to see that right like we all know how to run a die through a die machine uh so to create my little scene background i'm using some tumbled glass and cracked pistachio distress oxide inks and i'm not doing anything fancy here i'm just adding color to my panel like there's no special blending or anything like that. Um, I wasn't super worried about little streaks, especially in the grass, because then it gives like a little bit of a gradient as well. So um, we've talked before about the glass mat. Back to the card. Sorry. Um, <laughs> all of the Copic colors that I use are in numerical order, not in the order that I use them at the bottom of the screen. Um, and had I, de had I really thought this through, I think I would have made the bear the lighter color and the moose the darker color. But like I said, I had this little person talking to me the whole time. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, that is really the only thing I would change for colors is maybe make them opposite. Make my bear like a honey brown bear instead of this honey brown moose that I've got going on. Anyway, so back to the glass mat. Um, we've talked before about how it's all the rage, right? Like everybody's like, oh, I need to have the glass mat. I need to have the glass mat. And I got this glass mat because my other mat, um, the self-healing big black one that you've seen in all of my other videos before, um, I had a little malfunction with my, my heat gun. Don't use your heat gun right on your mat. You're going to get a warp. <laughs> Even if you have a heat resistance mat on top of that, it'll warp. So that's what happened. And then because I don't really move my mat around, I was cutting in the same place. So then you get that groove. And yes, it's self-healing, but not really. It looks like it's healed up. Um, but your knife can get in that. So it's like driving in winter and you get those ruts in the snow and it like pulls you off to the side of the road. So I was starting to notice that. 
And so I was looking into replacement mats and I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll have a look at my local scrap store. And they had the glass mat in. So I figured I'm getting a new one anyway. I'm going to give it a whirl. Um, it was really great for blending. When you blend, even if you're using like the nonstick craft mats or another piece of paper, the transition from the glass to the paper legit is fantastic like I don't know how to explain it unless you are actually able to try it if you are able to have a piece of your own tempered glass because I don't think you can just use like a regular piece of glass from like a picture frame or something like that I'm pretty sure this is a different kind of glass <laughs> I don't know maybe it's not who knows maybe if you've had luck with just a regular piece of glass good on you um I don't have glass kicking around so <clears throat> Yeah, it's it's very different. The transition of over from glass to the paper is much smoother, especially with the oxides. And it's super easy to clean up because you can always see where your ink is. Um, so I am using the Misty for a lot of the stamping here. And even then, it's not straight, but you know what? It's, it's, a, it's a handmade card. And here when I was stamping the first part of the greeting above the cutout for the speech bubble, um, I lost my train of thought of that. I don't even know. Oh, right. Um, I didn't take into account the little speech bubble frame. And so it is in the pictures a little bit closer than I would have liked it. It still worked out. Like the, the frame doesn't cover any of it or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> but I would have liked the sentiment to be a little bit higher up. I would have liked the spacing to be a little bit more. Um, so I'm just using the end of that last roll of foam tape from the dollar store for these little pieces here so I can figure out where my reveal wheel mechanism is going to go. Um, and I'm just lining that up and you want to adjust it so that you don't see the little embossed groove lines from the die in the window or on the side of the wheel. If you do, it's not a huge deal. It's not it's not going to wreck your day. It's not going to do anything like that. Um, it's just more for... So that it doesn't look wobbly when you spin it. Especially if you're adding color to the wheel piece. Um, sometimes I do in the pumpkin one from Pick of the Patch reveal wheel card that I did. I think that was... No, I didn't do a video for that. Um, I had used Copics to add shading because it was a pumpkin that you were going to see. Um, so with this one, it's white, so it's not such a huge deal. And it actually is a little bit off, but you can't see that. Um, so I was actually going to color the little frame for the speech bubble black. You'd see my black Copic marker. And then I was like, mm, that might be a little bit harsh. So I decided to use Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide Ink and just pounce that on and then let it dry. And here I'm using a Nouveau Precision, Smooth Precision glue pen um, to put that down. And I gotta tell you, I really like this pen. I've had other glue pens before um, that have that little ball and it's like a ballpoint pen. And this one is pretty fantastic. So I had taken my... Um, mechanism apart like you do when you're ready to stamp stuff on but then it occurred to me I didn't make the little windows to where I was actually going to stamp this stuff so there's a lot of, a lot of back and forth in this one so I'm just doing super super light lines with a pencil color or tracing not coloring not coloring it at all yet <laughs> um, tracing the inside of the speech bubble just so I know where I can put all of the little greetings that come in the Reveal Wheel Sentiments stamp set. Um, this is the first time I've used the speech bubble. And so what I like to do is I like to hold the, the wheel in place and I like to put all of them down at once. You can certainly stamp one at a time. I'm lazy. We know this. So <laughs> I'm doing it all at once and then I can see where they're gonna go make sure they're all lined up and just get all of my stamping done because we both know like I'm gonna stamp it twice anyway I've got the misty out why wouldn't I do that um so instead of 
stamping one, turning the wheel, stamping one, turning the wheel, stamping one, turning the wheel. Invariably, I'm probably going to drop an ink pad on it or something's going to happen or I'm going to knock something over or something tragic will happen. Um, This way, it reduces the chances of me doing any of those things. Oh, there's still a good chance I'm going to drop my stamp pad on it. I don't in this one, um, but I have in the past. And so... Once those are in place, I can use just a white eraser, erase those lines. I use a dry paintbrush to get all of that erasery bits away. And then I can stamp it twice with the Misty to get a nice big, bold black, <clears throat> excuse me, sentiment. So I'm going to put that aside. And then after that, I am going to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry, reassemble this yet again <laughs> because I am all over the place with this card and you will see that this whole video the card at the end it doesn't even match the pictures because I had forgot to do stuff because I had a little person talking at me <laughs> um, so I'm going to adhere my water straight down with my dollar store glue runner and you can see here and in the pictures at the end that because I had used the two different types of dye ink on this big solid image that it does look kind of splotchy. So to me, it kind of looks like those little white caps when the wind picks up, which I think was great. And then I'm going to go over the entire thing with the Spectrum Noir Clear Glitter Pen. Now, I know you've seen me use the um, Wink of Stella. The glitter in the Wink of Stella is actually gold, and I didn't want that. So with Spectrum Noir, it's white, clear actually clear it's not gold so it was better for what I wanted to do here I'm using more of that old um, mounting foam roll to adhere my little pieces up a bit and I'm going to use that for both of them and then I am actually going to show you very briefly because it's sped up the mounting tape in the package from the dollar store that I use so if that helps you when you're heading out to the dollar store it's in like the hardware section um then fantastic you get 15 feet for a buck <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I looked at it because I never really look at my packaging I just kind of yank what I need out of it and throw the packaging away and then when I was filming this I was like oh I should really show them because in my last video I said I would really try hard to remember to show you before I unwrapped it and I did and uh yeah 15 feet that's insane that is insane i haven't even done the math on that but that's a lot of cards that's a whole lot of cards i just went back in with my darkest of my copic markers here because i didn't feel like i had enough shading in the darkest areas of the body so like on back legs under the belly things like that um so here it is the 15 feet for a dollar <laughs> how crazy how can you go wrong how can you go wrong? People hang pictures with this stuff. It's totally good to use on your cards. Like, how exciting is that? And yeah, so this roll will last videos and videos and videos again because it just lasts forever. So when you're putting this on, um, I like to put it as close to the wheel as I can. Um, and that's another reason why you should really try and line it up with those little groove marks that Lawn Fawn has put into the die um, because when you're turning it if you have misjudged where a wobble might be you could hit the thing and your mechanism won't turn very well um, so I'm just cutting down pieces back and forth and I probably could have used like the super end of the roll from the previous one and I probably haven't even thrown that out yet um, so I'm gonna put this down and then at the end you're going to see a whole bunch of extra stuff. So I had used um, peeled paint to stamp some grassy stuff around the um, pond and some black soot second and third generation for some dragonflies. And I didn't put those in the video because I was literally done and almost done editing when I was like, oh crap. <laughs> I totally didn't even do this and my little girl she's like oh sorry about that mommy <laughs> it's like it's totally okay baby because it'll be in the pictures I am turning it sideways here so I can use the turn the wheel um little what's that called instruction instruction stamp 
I don't know. It's from the same reveal wheel sentiment stamp, but it just indicates to the recipient that you should you should turn the wheel so that they can see. And I mean, I still had to explain it to my grandfather because he's super used to like, just open the card and read it. And here he, he got a real kick, a real kick out of uh, being able to change the card for what he wanted. Because um, I had filmed this on Saturday morning and today is Monday and we had his birthday dinner Saturday evening. So um, yeah, he got a real a real kick out of it, out of it and I'm super glad cuz he's like one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. And so shout out to you for your birthday, 86 years and still strong. It's fantastic. So I'm just removing the backing from all of these pieces um so that it's nice and secure on the card base and then I'm going to place that down and that is pretty much going to be our video for today. <laughs> This is the card. I don't add any extra embellishments or anything like that. Um, I'm just finishing it up. I did also do the inside of the card with some second generation stamping, which is coming up right now. And uh, so that's basically exactly what I did on the outside. And then here is a shot of a collage so you can see all of the pictures. So thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button. Have a great day. Bye.